Joining us for the next 15 minutes to answer your questions are Scott Braddock from Scott Braddock Financial and J.W. DeGantz, the Greensboro District Manager at Jackson Hewitt. Okay, first off, if you have questions like, where's my money? You can text them to us at 336-379-5775. So let's start with the big one here. JW, where is the money? What's the holdup for people? Uh, so there was an undisclosed issue with the IRS uh, where about 15% of uh, taxpayers who were supposed to receive the direct deposit didn't, and they're flipped to a check for this one payment. And how long is that check going to take to come in, you think, Scott? Uh, you know, I would imagine uh, that should be fairly quickly. They, they might not have even really seen a glitch. I think the notice was just more to let folks know, don't look in your bank account, look in your mailbox. Uh, so I wouldn't expect much of a time delay. Any idea what that envelope is going to look like, Scott? I know a lot of people just throw away their junk mail. Well, and, and we've had that challenge with the stimulus checks when they first came out. It was a totally blank white envelope. Uh, so it's still a white envelope, but you can see through the, the, the window, if you will, of the envelope, and you can see that there's a check in there from the U.S. Treasury. So they've made it pretty clear uh, what that is. So not all parents are choosing to get this money. Some have chosen to unenroll from the program and wait and get it later. Uh, JW, why should someone consider doing that? Well, if they expect to receive uh, more income this year than last year, last year, excuse me. Uh, also, if um, they typically owe taxes every year, uh, they could then owe this money back at tax time. And how much money are we talking about here, JW? Well, for, um, for uh, children that are under six years old, the total credit this year is $3,600. Uh, the advance payment then is $1,800 over the course of six months. And then for children that are over six years old, but under uh, 17 or under, uh, then it's $3,000 total, uh, $1,500 for the six months, uh, spread out evenly over those six months. A lot of money, you wanna make the right decision. So mm -hmm. if you do wanna unenroll, how do you actually do that, Scott? So what you want to do is you want to take advantage of one of the portals that the IRS has set up uh, so that you can unenroll from these payments. And, you know, some folks, they're just used to a, a larger refund there uh, at tax time. So that, that's another reason why they may want to unenroll. Keep in mind the last date, the deadline to unenroll from future payments is August 30th. And do both parents have to do it or just one? That is a great question. What we're finding out, and there really wasn't a, a heads up on this, if you will, what we're finding out is that both parents need to unenroll if that is the desire. Otherwise, if just one parent, uh, one tax filer unenrolls, then you're still going to receive half a check. The other spouse who did not unenroll is going to receive half of that payment. Lots of red tape there for you, huh? Uh, another question we're getting coming in is, I didn't receive either one of the checks so far. What do I need to do? What would you tell them, JW? I, I would first say that um, if they haven't filed their 2019 or 2020 returns, they need to do that as soon as possible. If they are not um, filing, if they no longer are required to file, they would need to use one of those portals that Scott was mentioning. Uh, that's the non-filer portal that they can upload their information and then they would be added to the next payment. When you talk about next payment, how long is this gonna go on for? These payments are through December. So it's, it's half of the credit over the course of six months. So it started in July and it will end in December. Uh, and then the remainder would be then when you file your tax return in 2022. So through December, you want every one of those payments coming into your bank account. But we had someone, Scott, who messaged us and said, I received the one for July and I didn't get the August payment. I went on irs.gov and it showed my eligibility is pending. I meet all the qualifications. Why would it show me pending for August? Yeah, that is curious, uh, Ben. If they, if they received the one in July and now that payment is pending, I. You know, maybe JW has another idea here, but I'm thinking that may have to do with the glitch, uh, especially since you mentioned they received it in their bank account. It could be pending that paper check. That's that's really my best guess. I, I couldn't really think of anything else if they did, in fact, receive that payment in July. What do you think, JW? Is that good logic? 
I believe so. The only other I would add is that maybe if they recently had filed a 2020 return and then they were ineligible based on their 2020 return that was processed prior to August 2nd, 